Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Mary Magdalene Anglican Church. I'm Mark List, the pastor. Whether you're gathering with us in person or online, we are honored by your presence. I hope you've downloaded the bulletin. I hope you've prepared your table for Eucharist to celebrate with us. Also, happy Halloween or All Hallows Eve. Tomorrow, the church will celebrate All Saints Day. The church here in Mexico will celebrate Dia de los Muertos. And we next Sunday will celebrate the Sunday after All Saints. So what I would ask you to consider as you go through this week is to consider lives well lived. That, that's really what a saint is, comes from the Latin sanctus or holy. It's one of the holy ones of God. And now remember this, we did not come to this faith in a vacuum or by ourselves. Thanks be to God that somebody told somebody that told somebody that eventually told me. And oh, by the way, had the patience to tell it to me over and over and over again until I got it, if indeed I've ever got it. And I'm just not in the process of getting it more and more. So as we go through this week, remember lives well lived and those who have poured into your life to help you become the person that God has called you to become. And then join us to celebrate those folks as we gather next Sunday for the Sunday after All Saints Day. So let us now worship, offer a joyful noise to the Lord, and we will begin our liturgy as we always do with a wonderful musical offering from Esteban.
and peace to you from God. God fill you with all truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, 
It is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances that the Lord your God has charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you're about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart, Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 119 responsibly. Blessed are those who live a blameless life. Follow your Lord. Blessed are those who obey your instruction. And seek you with all their heart. They also do no wrong. But always, always walk in your ways. ways. You laid down your precepts. For us Rest to keep them diligently. diligently. Oh, that my ways might be steadfast. In the keeping of your statutes. When I would not be put to shame, when I, can be to all your commandments. I will truly thank you from the heart. When I, you the I will keep your statutes. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, Then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is the one and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wise, wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The gospel of our Savior. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Well, that's a wonderful recollection of a very typical conversation that would occur during the biblical times of Jesus. This is a student and a teacher having a conversation. These went on all the time. But the difference in this one is the stunning ending. So pay attention. You see, this scribe is a student of the law. Jesus is the rabbi or the teacher. And the way it worked is a student would come and ask the rabbi or the teacher a question. And then this dialogue and oftentimes a debate would ensue. And that was the learning process. And today the topic is or are the commandments. Now remember, the commandments are directions from God that were handed down to Moses. They were given to the covenantal people who had just been redeemed out of Egypt as a way to instruct them as how to live life in the world, how to live life as a community. Now, these commandments were often debated, discussed, and deliberated, primarily because the Jewish leadership, the temple leadership, wasn't happy with just the 10 original commandments, but added on literally hundreds and hundreds of more commandments, rules to live by in order to be a faithful Jew. And this scribe is actually doing a very wise thing. This scribe is coming to someone who is recognized as a wonderful and wise teacher and is saying, look, teacher, out of all of these commandments that we're supposed to keep, which is the greatest? Which is the one that above all others I have to be sure and live by life by? It's not a trick question. It's not a mean question. It's not a trap. It is an honest question from a scribe, someone trying to live a holy life with God to a holy teacher of God. So the simple question, which one is the first of all? And Jesus' answer is twofold. We hear first kind of a combination of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, the Shema, which is the daily Jewish prayer. God is one, and besides God, there is no other. And to love God with all heart, with all understanding, and with all strength. For Jesus, this is the most important commandment. Love God above all things and with every fiber of our being. But then Jesus adds the second instruction, to love neighbor as one's self. And here for this morning is the gospel point that Mark is trying to make. Because we hear that the scribe agrees with Jesus. The scribe understands these requirements. The scribe says very simply, 
You're right, Jesus. And this is more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now, just so we're clear, what the scribe just said, the whole burnt offerings and the sacrifices, that was the primary function of the temple. And what the scribe just said is what Jesus just declared is more important than all of that. And Jesus' response to this young scribe is stunning. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the reign of God. And then to draw this discussion to a close, hear what Mark says. He says, that's it. Class is over. We're done for the day because we are told that after that, <laughs> no one dared ask him any question. You see, what Mark is having Jesus tell us is this twofold command. This is what is necessary for holy living. And that as a Christ follower, this is our commitment to live the kind of life that Jesus lives. Jesus is telling his followers to love God, always, everywhere, and with everything. And in particular, as we draw nearer to Jerusalem, Jesus is making the point that Christ followers do this when it's easy, and Christ followers do this when it's difficult, no matter what. The other important thing that we hear, and I need to take this to heart regularly, is that love is more important than ritual that to be close to the reign of God is to see God as relationship, not to see God as a business transaction. And what I mean by that is this. Don't get me wrong. I love liturgy. I love ritual. It's part of what I seek. But it is a very quick step from ritual to legalism. What I mean by that is this, it's a very quick step from ritual and worship with a personal relationship with God to turning that into legalism and having it become a business relationship with God. Where rather than celebrate the joy and wonder of God, I begin to fuss and to worry more about all the things that I've done wrong, all the things that I've done to earn demerits or detention in the sight of God. And then I start to worry and quake about what is it that I need to do to get right with God? How do I earn back my salvation by doing things that please God? What kind of payments do I have to make to God to wipe the slate clean? And I forget, I forget that this is a relationship with God lived out by love and by grace. And in that relationship of love and grace, what I am asked to do is to accept how God views me. And it's quite simple. The psalmist says it and Paul says it. For we all fall short of the glory of God. God views me as a sinner. And what I am to do as a sinner living in the love and grace of God is to repent. Remember that wonderful Greek word metanoia, to stop going off into the deep weeds, to stop, to repent, and return to the Lord. What I am called to do in this loving relationship, not a legal relationship, is not be worried about how I pay God back, because that can't be done but rather to, in love and grace, accept what God has provided for me, accept God's providence for me in my sin, which is simply the life, the death, the resurrection, and the coming again of Jesus the Christ, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. To put my faith in God's love and grace. To trust that the grace of God has provided in the death of his son the one that God gave as a ransom for many, that the Son of God freely offered on the cross and resurrected to new life. That's the means by which I'm saved, not by any running around that I'm trying to do to earn my salvation. 
First John says it very plainly. For we love God. Why? Because God loved us first. Well, then, of course, comes the sticky part that Jesus added. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the other shoe of experiencing God's love in Christ. This is love of neighbor. And two questions then. What does Jesus mean by love and who does Jesus mean by neighbor? Not very complicated because I know the answer. We know the answer. One way to define love is this. What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That's pretty simple. What is hateful to me, don't do to somebody else. This is the kind of love that should be extended to one's neighbor. And the who? <laughs> the who is everyone is our neighbor. Those who are like us and those who are easy to love. Now the hard part for me, but it's also those who aren't like us and those who are pretty difficult to stand and even be around, let alone love. And quite simply, this is not an easy thing to do. But we are told in this lesson this morning, when we love God completely, we are bound to love our neighbors also, period. As the gospel says, end of class. No more questions asked. We simply cannot choose to do one and not the other. We are simply called to love all neighbors. Why? Well, to love God is to believe essentially that all neighbors are the same as we are, which is true. They may look different. They may have different lifestyles. They may do things differently but they have the same dreams and desires to love the Lord and to follow God as all faithful disciples. They too have picked up their crosses and have made the commitment to follow Jesus. And the good news from Jesus is this kind of love in between neighbors is achievable. The good news is that the scribe understood it and the scribe heard these amazing words, you are not far from the reign of God. The directions given by Jesus may not be easy, but they are pretty clear. As people of God, we are loving God people and we are loving neighbor people and it can happen. Because remember this, we are the people who gather for Eucharist the time when the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ reminds us that we are redeemed people, reminds us as we proclaim, as we will in just a bit, glory to you, Lord Christ, your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming again we await, amen, which is simply a way to say yes, come Lord Jesus. In summary then, as Christ followers, we live by love and grace, not just to follow the commandments simply because we are rule followers, but rather to follow the commandments so that we might become the people that Jesus the Christ wants us to be. People formed and fashioned for life in the reign of God. So that's what we do as Christ followers who are, oh, by the way, also the church, we do all that we can to love God and to love neighbor. And this is what that means. We welcome, period. No questions asked. We welcome all races and ethnicities. We welcome all religions. We welcome all countries of origin. We welcome all gender identities, all sexual orientations, all abilities and disabilities, all spoken languages, all ages, everyone is welcome. And when they come here, when they are about what they do, when they are who they are as called and created by God, we as Christ followers, we as this church, we stand with them unconditionally and unquestionably. We welcome, we care for them here 
they are always loved and always safe. In the mighty name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, amen. We humbly bring our prayers before you and ask you to make us what you created us to be, faithful followers, vessels of love. Teach us to love you with all we are and all we do. You are the perfect teacher, O God. Teach us to walk in your ways. Teach us to love you with all we are and all we do. You are worthy of praise. Teach us to sing our praises and delight in your word for our lives instruct us how to serve you teach us to love you with all we are and all we do you are the perfect leader teach us to be attentive citizens of the world and supportive of the efforts of peace mindful of our responsibilities to the poor and suffering among us we pray for wisdom for our leaders and may they conduct themselves with integrity teach us to love you with all we are we do. You are the perfect healer. Incline our hearts and hands towards compassionate servants to those who ache from loneliness, those who hunger, those who suffer from great pain. We pray today for Shannon. Teach us to love you with all we are and all we do. You show us perfect love. Teach us to love our neighbors, especially those with whom we struggle. Keep us to, help us to mend our relationships with ourselves and with each other. Forgive us when we fail and teach us to forgive the fa failures of others. Teach us to love you. With all we are and all we do. We pray for those who journey here, whose journey here has ended and bring them into the joys of your heaven and perfect union with you. We remember today, teach us to love you with all we are and all we do. You are the perfect teacher, O oh God. Teach us to walk in your ways. Teach us to love you with all we are and all we do. In the name of Jesus we pray, teach us to love you with all we are and all we do.
Let us confess our sins to God. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives in the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifice are pleasing to God. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right indeed. It is our joy and our salvation, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your son to share our human nature. By his death on the cross, he made the one perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world and freed us from the bondage of sin. You raised him to life triumphant over death. You exalted him in glory. In him, you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. We proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and singing. All glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine, which we receive, may be to us the body and blood of Christ, that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. 
United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray in our chosen language and voice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the precious body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love and care in assuring us of your gift of eternal life and uniting us with the blessed company of all faithful people. Therefore, ever living God, keep us steadfast in your holy fellowship and now we offer ourselves all that we have and are to serve you faithfully in the world through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who by death has destroyed death, bring you new life, new hope, new alternatives, and all courage and joy in believing, so that as a new creation in Christ, you may be Christ for those to whom Christ shall send you. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer and giver of life be with you always. Amen. Amen. Wow. 
now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Have a wonderful week. Be blessed. Amen.